Okay, hi guys, I'm gonna show you quickly how to adjust the chains. It's really set up to the point where you can quickly adjust the chains from one exercise to another just by kind of lifting the chain and letting the chain go through the loop that's right above the handle. So as you can see right in here, the loop is attached to the chain with the carabiner attached to the chain as well. So if you notice, if I unattach the carabiner through the loop, I can take the carabiner out of the handle and quickly readjust it to a, to a strap. So as you can see, I can put the same carabiner and have the chain hold the strap as well. A few seconds to do that. Okay guys, let me show you what a perfect plank looks like. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna walk up the yoke bar and when I, if I'm a beginner on this, I wanna just make sure that I can hold a steady balance on the, on the handles and the yoke bar. And I do that by keeping my feet about shoulder width apart. And I wanna feel comfortable. I wanna feel like I have perfect balance and I feel very comfortable with my stance. I have a soft bend on my knees. I even have a soft bend in my elbows as well. Now, if, uh, when I get to a, a plank position, basically I'm just walking it, the, the handles down lower to the mat and I wanna keep my belly button in so I activate my stomach and, and just create that, that uh, I wanna activate my stomach and create that stability for my abs and my lower back. So as you can see, I keep my hips up just a little bit. I hold steady, I'm engaging my abs. I have a soft bend on my elbows that acts like a shock absorber. And if I wanna increase the difficulty on the plank, I just walk it back further and hold steady, belly button in, and you notice that as you fatigue, you might start to shake a little bit more, and that's okay, but as long as you keep your hips steady as possible, you're still in that strong plank position. If it seems to be difficult down that low, just go ahead and inch it up a little bit more, and you'll notice that some of your body weight is gonna be off the handles and will feel a little bit easier. I'm still in that plank position. Doing the same thing, walk it up, make it a little bit easier. I still have good balance. I'm still activating my midsection and I'm holding steady. Many different variations from very easy to difficult to advanced. Once you get very advanced, you can put your feet together and that's gonna increase the instability and you'll feel more of the pressure in your midsection and in your core as opposed to your arms. And then you can walk it up, do the same thing, feet together. And there you have it, all the different variations of a plank. Just another quick note on safety and technique. The rule of thumb I have as far as protecting your joints is that when you're doing anything related to the arm, whether it be a tricep extension, uh, a bicep curl, or a push-up, the, the real basic general rule of thumb is always keep your wrists behind your fists. So what I don't like to see is when the, the uh, hands go back like this and you're putting a lot of pressure on your wrists, but if you can hold right at the edges of the bar and keep your wrists behind your fists, you'll find that you'll have a better push or pull when you're doing your exercises. So if I'm here like this doing a basic tricep extension, watch how my wrists stay behind my fist the whole time. And I'm keeping my elbows in, and I'm still able to get that contraction on my tricep while I keep my wrists behind my fist. Now watch what it looks like when you don't have your wrist behind your fist, and look at the the possible tension you can put on your joints. So you can see how I bend it back, and that's actually, if you catch this angle right here, I'm pulling my wrist back this way, instead of this way. Can you see that? So this is what is not good, and this is better. This is safer. Uh, let me show you on the bicep curl. Wrist behind fist, same application. Hold in here, 
go ahead and extend. My wrists stay behind the fist. The wrong way to do it is when you're pulling and you actually, when your palms start to come up like this here, that's when you know you're putting too much pressure on your wrists. Okay, my elbows are fine, but now I'm torquing my wrist. And I can still get through the bicep motion, but, but risking injury to the wrist. So here is what it looks like with your wrist behind your fist, doing the same thing. <laughs> 